I am originally from uh, <coughs> from Uruguay, but I I would like to say a few words about um, a case in in Latin America that has been inspiring all of us uh, th this year in in. 2012, and that is the Chilean student movement. I used to say that, that there was a telluric earthquake last year in Chile, but this year there is a, a, a social and political earthquake absolutely in, in Chile. First of all, that it's the case in Chile. Uh, a country been uh, known because of successful model. The country number 21 in the OECD uh, since last year with excellent statistics, economic figures, uh, with uh, uh, 20 years <coughs> of democracy since the democracy was, was uh, reinstated after 17 years of dictatorship. So why is all this happening just in this country that where apparently there is welfare, there are good economic situation, and people should be happy? And what, what I think is that this Chilean student movement has revealed many things to Chile, to Latin America, and also to the world. First of all, changes absolutely in civil society. Changes in, uh, so in patterns of social mo mobilization and changes in political representation. And, uh, I'll try to explain this three point. It has also <coughs> revealed that uh, students are revolting against one of the most, it, it is a well-known system, the, education in Chile, it's a good system, but it has revealed to be the most segregated system in, in Latin America, perhaps in many parts of the world. It was a system created during the dictatorship, but preserved by democracy with some cosmetic changes. And it, it is a system that, the education system, that is unequal and just also authoritarian and based on exclusion. Those who can pay can get an education. Those who cannot pay, uh, education is not a right. It's as the president of Chile said uh, this year, it is a consumption good. You can consume this education if you pay. So it's not a fundamental right as we see it. And this is what the student movement in April started to present to, to the society in Chile and to all of us in, in the world. <coughs> Students in Chile have now been mobilized for nine months since April when the sale of a state university, the Central University, was proposed. And this has some, it, it also happened before, two or three years ago, but uh, there was just some minor changes and some minor reforms that indeed have led to the situation that it's now. The nine months of student mo mobilization that have shown on the first new forms of leadership, the leadership of this movement and the most visible faces are young people, young women, a young, I don't know if you have seen Camila Vallejo, she is 23, she's beautiful, and it can be understood by the political class that a young, beautiful, articulate, and leftist woman can lead such a massive movement. It has the massive support of the Chilean population, 89%, according to recent polls, support the demands of the Chilean movement. It has also shown that in, besides this 
leadership and these well-known uh, faces of the young people, there is a sort of decentralized leadership. There are many calls to action from different points, not only this massive demonstration that are the biggest demonstrations since the dictatorship. Uh, there have been uh, flash mobs and songs and circus acts all over the cities, or in, in all over Chile, not only the political big demonstrations, but all these calls for action just seem to emerge very spontaneously all over Chile. Virtual networks, transnational links, all these have been characteristics of these new forms of mobilization. Innovation has been one of the words that, that we can characterize this movement. Um, there has been uh, traditional forms, but also the, it has been very innovative and I brought some pictures that, sorry, I didn't have time to put them, but um, those who have time can come to my lap laptop to, to see them. Um, the different forms of, of mobilization, how appealing <coughs> to um, different forms of theater, of songs, of, um, it has really been very different of what is known as the student movement in, in Latin America. Um, media, on the contrary, has not shown that face of the mobilization, but the obscure face, the violence, and the repression. That there has not been a real partnership in spite of the massive support that this movement has, media has tried to show only the opaque or the obscure face of this mobilization. And last but not the least, traditional civil society organizations and also political parties has been surprised and paralyzed by this mo mobilization. They didn't know how to react. They didn't know what to do. Um, students have clearly said, I think, Ingrid, that they used your words yesterday, help us or move out of the way. We, these are our demands and we are going to keep fighting. Um, there has been now a return to class under so-called protect hours, so a student can <coughs> go to class but can also mobilize students, those protect hours. And there are many learnings that can be taken next time or next phase. And uh, as I see it, next time is very soon. It's after the, the summer vacation in, in March, and where the learnings of this year and the, the renew demands and, and forms are going to uh, start again. <coughs> and, uh, from um, the part of civil society organizations, from the part of uh, academia, we have to pay a lot of attention to understand, to follow, and to learn from these experiences. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.